Hello, everyone. I hope, uh, we hope you had a great coffee break. Now we're back with the scheduled content, which is the gold stock, which I called goals all the new because we'll be first talking about and the present, and then at the end, the special treat, which is the future of KDE goals. So, yeah, let's start with the past then. The distant past for some 2017. Ancient times. <laughs> I, I, I see you old people not being happy with this. Stop shaking your old bones at me. It is distant past. So anyway, Lydia's blog post, it's, you, can, uh, you can say it started it all. Um, the whole initiative about the, uh, about the goals. Uh, credited in that blog post are uh, some other contributors, Kevin, Mirko, David, and Frederick, apparently all put their minds together to figure out how the goals uh, initiative should work for the uh, community. And apparently, for several years, this and a couple of next blog posts were the only place where the process is written somewhere. So thankfully, <laughs> the blog post was still up. Otherwise, we wouldn't have no, an idea how to perform the, the selection of, of goals. So at that time, the first uh, goals were uh, selected. There were 10 proposals that ended up being uh, available for the vote. And as you might remember, or not, because that's the distant past, it, it was usability, privacy, and onboarding were the first three goals that were, um, that were selected. <coughs> um, as, a, as a maybe funny note, there were over 600 votes uh, uh, cast for that particular uh, vote, and it gets hard to try to figure out with our ranked uh, voting uh, system who is the winner, and it's hard to do, so uh, Kevin, uh, created a PHP script to basically ingest the results from the, from the system and spill out the, uh, the winner. No, it's a temporary solution, but uh, it worked for that time, and uh, thanks to that, we got our first uh, three uh, winners. Then the not-so-distant past. You might re recognize the, uh, the goals webpage because that's how it looks uh, today. So in the year 2019, Time to select the new goals comes. Well, just as a reminder, when we select new goals, the old ones aren't canceled, they aren't ended. We just shift our focus to the new goals instead. So the usability, etc., are still alive and well. For example, you can check out Nate's blog post, which started at around that time and is still going regarding usability. Um, so after two years, it was time to select uh, new ones to focus the community on. This time, 600 votes, um, 11 proposals that went to the final stage, and uh, as you hopefully know, the, the, the winners were Wayland, Consistency, and all about the apps. And as a side note, the same temporary solution was used again to figure out the winners because it's hard to uh, count the 600 or so votes from the system. So Thanks, Kevin. The, the temporary solution has saved us at that time uh, uh, again. And then something happened that you might, might know about. So uh, maybe a quick recap of, of what happened since then. So um, even though the pandemic happened and it stopped some of the work, uh, some in-person sprints that were supposed to happen didn't happen. Of course, this is our first big event uh, that we can meet each other together. Um, because of that uh, COVID situation, we actually extended the goals for an additional year, hopefully to, to, make, it, uh, to make it right. Um, and, and finally, finally for this year, we are ready to, to, to select uh, new ones. As a other thing that, that happened, we, we switched the goal champions uh, for the apps uh, goal from Jonathan to, to Alesh. Um, and some other things that, that happened. So the KDEV has hired a project coordinator, mainly to help with the goals, yours truly. 
Um, as maybe a consequence of that, the goal selection process is now documented on the wiki instead of Lydia's blog post. So <laughs> if, uh, if something happens, it's now possible to go through the process uh, yourself and see what, what exactly should happen, when, etc. cetera. So uh, that's good. And uh, during my, uh, as part of my work as the, as the coordinator, uh, we set up a, uh, about monthly uh, meetings with the champions to meet and discuss uh, their work, to how the EV can help them, uh, how they can help each other with uh, outreach, with, uh, with the work that's being done. Um, and I uh, hope this will continue for, for the new champions uh, that will be announced today um, as well. Um, so that was a quick recap from the overall process perspective, but as is tradition uh, for Academy, I will now uh, ask the champions to uh, give their own uh, updates uh, about their specific goals, and I'll be starting with the apps, so please welcome Aleš to the stage. You want me to move it to the other screen? Yeah, exactly. Okay, it's your laptop. <laughs> well. F5? No. Yeah, all right. Okay, so, um, yeah, right now we're gonna talk a little bit about what we're doing uh, we are the, regarding the, the apps goal here, uh, well, here in KD, obviously not about everything that all of the apps have been doing, like all of you know what uh, app you specifically care about, and I am sure that you're doing everything to make sure that this happens, but uh, we've been trying to do some uh, well, higher level thinking work about how we can make them flourish more easily, right? Like there's a ton of things going on so, uh, regarding creating an app, uh, that goes far beyond the actual well, C++ project or whatever it is that you do, right? Like you need uh, a, a little bit of infrastructure in there so that you can reach your, your users. Um, I think that it's worth noting that one of the things that we do quite well in KD is, is apps. Uh, some of them are, are very, uh, very well used around the world. Uh, we have over 240 on, uh, listed on our website. Some are more uh, technical details than others, but well, all of them are for our users. Uh, and I'm pretty sure and quite convinced that, uh, well, if humanity used more of our apps, we would have less walls. <laughs> so, um, big part of the reason why we're not reaching these users, it's not exclusively because they're not as good as they could be, but because it's hard for us to do all of the work, right? Like, for example, as a software developer, you're, you, you're good at, I don't know, doing a code refactoring on your code or maybe putting together a, a UI, but are we, well, as good as it gets to like putting everything to the last mile, right? Like getting on all of the stores that we could be, uh, making sure that we're all uh, integrated on, on every platform. And this is things that we always need to do. And as KD, we're not that uh, well segmented, so that we like we only do one thing. Like if you as a maintainer, you say no, no, I don't write blog posts. You're already a bad maintainer, right? Like as maintainers, we need to write blog posts. We need to care about bug reports about this uh, specific feature that two people care for, but we might care for because it's our app or not. In any case. Um, Thing specific about our apps is that we have this uh, end user uh, focus in mind, so we care about things that people are going to use on their devices. We don't do, um, I don't know, apps for helicopters. We do things that you're going to have on your laptop, on your phone, on your, I don't know, TV nowadays. Uh, and there's always this one-to-one uh, -one relationship with uh, the app and, and the end user. Not that this is, <laughs> we are the only people doing that but this is something specific that we're doing, Katie. Um, and then we're multi-platform. We are based on a framework that uh, helps us uh, reach other platforms than our 
probably uh, most important one, which would be uh, Linux and the free software platforms. Uh, but we also, by using Qt and developing our apps with a bit of good intentions, we can uh, reach other platforms like Windows, like um, Android, Mac OS, and actually like whatever platform that may, might happen eventually in the future. Uh, so what I'm gonna do right now is a little bit go through the different platforms we're on, see how well we're doing there, what kind of work we've done, and well, to give an insight on how I see things going now that the goal is getting uh, wrapped up as a goal, uh, because like there's gonna be three new ones uh, coming up. Uh, the first platform I'm gonna talk about, uh, or the first two platforms I'm gonna talk about are the Linux-based ones. Um, I'm not gonna talk about the different distros first because we don't have numbers or we don't have very good numbers there. Not that we have good numbers here either, but uh, also because we don't put actively our applications on the different distros, right? Like, uh, it's not us who put the packages on, I don't know, OpenSUSE, it's OpenSUSE people who are very friendly to us and most of them are, are parts of our community who do that, but there's, there's not a lot we can do, I, I think, for, well, to improve the situation there. Also, we don't have a lot of, of grip on what can happen over there. But on the other hand, on, on Snap and on FlatHub, we're gonna see later, we do have that uh, possibility, we decide that when there's a bug, we get to fix it and then uh, release a new uh, version. And we're gonna start talking about Snapcraft. Snapcraft is uh, the solution that um, Canonical and Ubuntu came up with to, uh, to make it possible for people to provide applications for them without having them put them into their uh, distro. We have a ton of uh, applications over there, 106. Thanks, Jonathan, are you here? Wave, well, everybody buy a beer to Jonathan. <laughs> Over, over this week, uh, thanks very much for that work. Um, both uh, this one and uh, uh, Flatpak, Flatpak have the specificity that we're also putting forward a package for other applications that use Qt and KD frameworks to be on the, on the platform. Uh, here we can see that we have uh, 300,000 um, deployments uh, of, of, of that, uh, that runtime. Uh, in active use on, on, on the platform, which I think that it's uh, sizable and useful. Like, we, it shows that we're not just uh, providing for our, our applications, which is useful, but uh, we're also helping the rest of the, of the community to reach these platforms by, uh, by providing the infrastructure that we need. Uh, the, the important part about these packaging formats, of course, is that uh, it's not gonna um, force our uh, LTS users to be stuck in weird versions, and I think that it's very important, especially on Ubuntu. Ubuntu. There's a lot of Ubuntu users that are using LTS, and it doesn't make a lot of sense that because you want your system not to well, crash all the time, or I don't know, get new versions, if that's the definition of stability, that uh, you wouldn't get a new version of Kate or a new version of Chicken Prey, which is definitely something you want because you need all of the puzzles, right? Uh, or applications that are in most use, I tried to make a very uh, short summary over there, are. Uh, a Clara and Krita with uh, around 60,000 uh, deployments, and then there's KDN Live and Color Paint, which are also, um, well, fairly used. Um, Ubuntu developers clearly need a lot of colors in their lives with both Krita and, and Color Paint, right? <laughs> yeah, it seems like there's more than just brown. So, um, the other store that uh, we are maintaining uh, actively from KD is uh, FlatHub. We have uh, also over 100 apps. Uh, you can find, so uh, here in Snapcraft, if you want to see if your app is there, you can go to this URL. And if it's not there, well, you can make sure that it's there either by talking to Jonathan and he will tell you how to put it. Uh, here, um, FlatHub, we're having, uh, the, the Snapcraft packages we build within our infrastructure uh, in FlatHub, uh, we are building them uh, on um, their servers. We just provide some recipes on this GitHub uh, repository. So again, if you want to make sure your application is available over there, you go to this GitHub. And I added the search um, because like everything that starts with org.kd is ours. If it doesn't start with org.kd, it's not ours. Uh, you will see 
if your app is there, if there's a bug, you will see what needs changing over there. Obviously, it's just the, the recipe. Most of the bugs will be in your C++ because, oh my gosh. Um, something that uh, is kind of interesting about FlatHub nowadays is that there's these devices that I think David will talk about later that are called the Simdex, uh, the only store that we have available on the desktop mode and that allows you to install lo normal Linux in non-games apps is the uh, is, is FlatHub. So if you want to make sure that your application is working on these devices, you just uh, put it on, the, on FlatHub and it should just work. Um, we also have a platform. It has a little bit less users. Uh, in this case, the numbers are even less reliable than before. Well, before it's the numbers that uh, Canonical gives, uh, or the Snapcraft store gives. Here we are going with the uh, well downloads and updates numbers for the last version that we released, right? So you can make of that what you wish. Um, the most used apps or the most downloaded and installed apps are KDN Live and Krita. You will see that Krita is a constant uh, on these, especially outside of, of, of uh, Win, uh, Linux. Um, these two on 25K and Ocular. Ocular is also uh, very loved on the multi-platform world, which is uh, nice. And then moving a little bit beyond our Linux, but still on Linux, I guess. Uh, we have Android. Uh, as Android, the, I think that the important uh, way that we should be thinking to deliver our applications is uh, Google Play. Uh, on Google Play, though, we don't only have uh, two applications uh, right now. We have Krita, which actually is a fairly new thing, but they already have over a million uh, deployments, so, I mean, <laughs> wow. Uh, and then KD Connect, which actually is uh, doing very well as well over there with uh, over uh, 300,000 uh, deployments, also KD Connect. I think that it's uh, worth mentioning because it makes... Uh, well, all of the uh, environment that we create much more appealing to uh, a lot of uh, Android users because we allow for their integration. Also, not only on, on Android, but more about that later. Um, what we did for Android was to put together a, an SDK, which right now is using Craft, Craft being the tool that we use for more, most non-Linux platforms and appeasements. Uh, that is used to just build applications. Here we're talking about that on Android, on Windows, on Mac, what we're creating are packages that include all of, all of the dependencies, and Craft is good at that. Uh, so that's, that's, that's why it works, and we get to re reuse a lot of the metadata from each application there. I took up, talked about uh, Google Play uh, before, but since there's a process between when you start creating your application and when you um, and when you decide that you're uh, capable of delivering them to users. We put together a Nile repository for Android that has um, well 25 apps of ours that are already compiling and they should just work right now. And if they, should, if they don't, I recommend you fix them so that we can put them on Google Play and make sure that billions of people are able to use uh, your application and enjoy the freedom through their not-so-free operating system. Um, here's two applications. Here we have KD Connect. KD Connect is the only application in KD we have that is using the native uh, Java way of doing things, which is quite nice because like, <laughs> there's been a lot of contributors that have started joining because they knew how to do Java but we're not, we're not all that familiar with C++, QML, and Kirigami, as everybody should be, obviously. <laughs> and here at the, at the left, we have KD Itinerary, which is uh, developed by Volker, and it's an amazing app. This one is using Kirigami. You can see that they look slightly similar in many ways, but not all. Uh, well, we can work further together to make sure that they look as integrated as possible, but I think that it looks pretty good. I've used that application while well, traveling, uh, not that I have traveled that much over the last couple of years, but that is not Fulker's fault. That's just <laughs> humanity. Uh, and then we have the Windows Store. Um, Windows Store being kind of interesting in that, well, on one hand, it has been the, um, 
the reason why many of us have started developing in KDE, but on the other hand, it has a lot of users and it has a lot of opportunity for us to make sure that like our software can reach, uh, well, like I was saying before, humanity. Right. So um, we do have a bunch of applications over there, uh, eight on the Windows Store right now, uh, including, um, well, Krita, of course. Uh, this one is on three million uh, acquisitions, they call them over there. Uh, actually, Krita, Krita is, is to pay for, well, one on the store and then two on, on the Windows Store. So obviously we have this thing where we can decide to ask for a price for applications and it probably makes a lot of sense because it's a way for, to fund the development. On the other hand, uh, like anyone could compile it, right? But then in practice, we, what we have seen is that nobody really wants to compile an application. And actually like just being on a store, it has a lot of convenience uh, value. Uh, to us and especially to our users. So they are playing this uh, game on, on both sides a little bit, which is not to be a uh, non-problem as we will see a, little, a bit later on, but well, you see what I mean. Uh, here we're also using uh, Graph for the window builds. Uh, we have a continuous delivery system that you can use, so you don't need to have a Windows computer to develop the, this application. What you need to have is like Graph, build the application. I, still would ask you to at least have some kind of virtual machine or something so that you can try the application and make sure that it works and when somebody has a problem, test it, right? But you don't have to do all of the boring, non-useful work that you should do to make sure that uh, application is, is, is available. You can focus on the QA and the things that you know how to do because, well, that's why you're the maintainer and that's why you're interested in reaching the users. Um, yeah. Something that I mentioned here, and it probably we could exp extrapolate to the rest, I think that uh, something that we should be doing more in the future, we've talked about it in the past, but we never really took action, is uh, thinking about monetization. It's definitely a problem for our developers to like not be able to sustain themselves. And for example, Krita, they've just done it, they uh, added the price tag, and they did all of the work to make sure that well, get, people got what they paid for. Uh, I think that we can extrapolate this uh, format to other applications if you are interested in going all the way um, in this direction. Uh, here we can see some screenshots as well. This is Kate. Uh, like you will see, it looks a lot like the Kate you have, but it has different buttons at the top right corner to close it. Um, but essentially, it's more or less the same features that you would get on Linux, but on Windows, and that's fine. And then here we can see our Jewel of the Crown on Windows, uh, Krita, uh, which well, looks good, and you can paint, which is what matters, right? Um, like I said before, here we're asking for money uh, for something that is available for free in a way, and when I was researching for, for this presentation, I like, went to the Windows Store web app, uh, and then searched Krita, and then I got all of this. And these two, I imagine that they just go to the website and download the application just uh, for uh, half the price because they don't need to do any of the development. Uh, I hear they've been reported, but this is something that we need to be wary of anyway, and we need to uh, see how we can fix, if it's fixable at all. We're gonna keep having these problems, I guess, but uh, I don't know. I guess it's a problem too good to have if you're too, uh, too good that people want to well, steal from you, I guess. So to wrap up a little bit, uh, you will notice that I didn't mention Apple uh, and or Mac OS, if you wish. Uh, we do have uh, an application on the Apple Store, which is the KD Connect iOS application, and that's working fine. It's a client that was created native, also using the native SDKs for the platform. We're not using the uh, infrastructure we have in Qt because it was just not convenient. Um, we haven't decided to put any of the apps yet because there's a lot of fear around our place and how it would work to be on that platform. It could make sense eventually, but we need to make sure that it's a place that we can be comfortable on. Uh, so, well, I don't know. If you have an experience, reach out. If you want to do it, reach out as well and, well, do it. And in the meantime, well, we do have infrastructure, for example, to build applications. We do have a system for continuous de delivery. We also have um, 
craft uh, adapter to build macOS uh, binaries, so that works. Um, yeah. Something to put an effort on, uh, an emphasis on is like, it's about the effort, it's about the effort about going to the, like all the way to make sure that your uh, users get the application, right? When you say, my application, my, my application is, is really good, you could use that application on any operating system, that's true, but then you need to like put the effort into like uh, saying, if you say, let's put it on Windows Store, you'll need to spend some hours into making sure that uh, it works on, on Windows like it should, but then it will pay off, like you will start uh, seeing users. And I think that uh, using the recompensation uh, features that you have on that store is, is a good way for doing that. I think that it's a bad idea to talk about free software as this free thing uh, or this ring for free. But uh, so if we can make sure that, uh, well, people get compensated somehow for making sure that applications work, it always makes sense. Um, Creating an app is about, uh, it needs to be a team effort or at least you need to be multidisciplinary yourself. You need to do uh, things, like you need to do the app, like you need to do very good coding and, and uh, well, tech work, but then you need to also think about other things like QA, about um, promotion, etc. And in KDE, we try to be, uh, well, a varied, varied community where People can do different things, or other different people can do different things, and I think that we should uh, try to uh, well, promote that. So, if you're good at, at, at communicating, of course, I'm not gonna be the one saying don't do it, but um, otherwise, reach out to the people who are doing it, and, and work together, and when you do, well, thank them. Uh, and, like I'm talking about promotion, but like, for example, uh, QA, etc. Documentation is also an important topic. Everything is uh, very relevant here. And then uh, for Linux, uh, so like I was talking on, on the other operating systems, one of the things they have is that they have a plan to be able to monetize applications. On Linux, what we're doing mostly is relying on, on donations. We are working with some organizations to put together uh, ways for that to happen. We're also working with our projects to do that, like we've started to do with, um, with Kadian Life in a somewhat um, organized way, but I am sure that there's more uh, to be done there. Again, if this is something that you, that you would like to work on, uh, please reach out, and this is something that we can definitely talk about. Bummer. So, this was not an empty slide. <laughs> This had a different color of background, but <laughs> yeah, it had white letters. So uh, what I wanted to talk about in here is that uh, we very recently hired our app store support engineer named Ingo. You've probably all met him before because he has been at Academy and around KD for I think much longer than I have at the very least. Um, well, the text I had here was uh, more or less the same I sent to the KD community mailing list introducing his position. But a, a little bit, uh, the idea with uh, this position is to uh, have somebody who can uh, help all of you to do all of these, um, well, none specific to your application, tasks still technical that, that needs doing. So making sure that, for example, um, applications can reach the different stores easily and so on. Uh, we're gonna start working towards Windows. I think that uh, many of you, you will have, uh, well, interacted with him in, in, that, in that way. Not that we only care about Windows, but I think that it's one of those that we can uh, start to monetize the, the earlier. And I am putting a specific emphasis on monetizing because I think that it's not really fair that we start paying, uh, we start a paying position for non-free operating systems that, well, is not gonna have a direct way of, of returning that investment as, a, as an EV. So this is what I think that is um, well, the most important part of this position. So thank you, hope you liked my explanation. <laughs> questions, no questions. Okay, then I hear we have some minutes for questions. So does anyone have a question just yet? Okay, thank you very much, Alesh. Um, so now I will 
welcome and please welcome him with me, Nicolo, for the consistency uh, goals update. Go ahead. This work. Okay, can we get this working by any chance? I like the microphone. <laughs> Sorry, huh? It says on. Okay, now it's on. Nice. Sorry about that. I forgot to turn it on. Nice. Okay, so um, consistency. Uh, consistency was selected three years ago. Three years ago, I didn't know anybody. I didn't know anything about KDE. I just joined. And it has actually been a pleasure to have an in-person academy before everything that has happened before, uh, after that to actually learn about KDE and being selected as a gold champion was a great experience. However, being selected as a gold champion, well, it, it, back then I was very much um, naive. I didn't know how things worked and the KD consistency goal in itself as a whole was very naive. So what I did first was to go out, talk to people, try to understand how the community worked. I set up uh, a blog, a chat for the consistency, everything and uh, a, wiki, a wiki page, a fab, these kind of things. And I'll go through them later on to see wh what worked and what didn't. So I want to not talk about the yearly advancement of the last year, but uh, the consistency goal as a whole, and what was the original plan, what was achieved, what was wrong in my initial uh, plan. So the first adventure is consist consistency between applications. And yeah, and... Uh, what has happened is that just after the selection of the goal, a lot of people actually stood up and uh, told me a lot of very valid criticism that all went to Fabricator. If you go to the consistency board on Fabricator right now, it is full of very valid criticism that is very relevant. And it has actually started a lot, and I mean a lot of very long discussions like this, and I was mostly sleeping through them, but uh, we actually reached a consensus very often. And I'm quite proud actually of those discussions because we had a lot of mockups, a lot of designs, and I think that uh, the first part of the goal, actually seeing what's wrong and seeing uh, how we could improve it was uh, correct, correctly handled. So wh what has happened after that, uh, less so. Uh, the first case that has happened after the discussion about a design. Of course, the first one is that nothing happened. For most of the stuff that uh, was proposed, obviously nothing happened. And that's reasonable. I didn't expect everything to be handled, obviously. There are some things that I'm a bit sad about that I didn't see. Uh, there are some things in particular that I took and I talked about them in every presentation, saying we currently need somebody with this skill to implement this thing. And it's really important. Case in point, uh, similarly to the K hamburger menu that's in many applications, I really wanted something that was a key panel. If you um, pop up Dolphin, it has panels on the left and on the right. They're customizable. You can move them around. They're very nice. They're completely different from each uh, applications. Each application re-implements them differently. Having a common component that you could use throughout them was something that I talked, I think, in every uh, consistency presentation, and it was never done. This is just an example, and um, I don't want to blame everything on others. Uh, after all, I could have implemented it. I didn't quite have the skills. Um, another thing that has happened is that people did implement the designs, but uh, they completely ignored the discussions. This is where I, I think I'm uh, like a bit more sad about. I want to make a couple of examples because I think that with all the discussion that has happened, uh, seeing that those components actually implemented but completely ignoring the discussion made the discussion themselves feel useless. First example is the swipe navigator. 
it has been discussed a lot on Fabricator. It was actually uh, implemented in Kurigami, and when it was implemented, it did not follow the designs at all, and it completely ignored the discussion, which is fine. Uh, but I would like, when that happens, to see more discussions, like um, going back to the drawing board and so, uh, find something that everybody agrees on, so that we actually have uh, uh, human interface guidelines about that component, and we agree on them, and then we implement it like that. Another example that I could bring is the review. There was actually a lot of discussion on how an overview should look like, like the one that was recently implemented. When it was implemented, it looked nothing like the discussion, and the discussion was ignored. I did raise the, this point, and um, they said that it was still uh, being worked on, uh, worked on, so the final version was going to look different. That was not true. I mean, it still, it still looks the same way. And again, this is very much on me as well, because I could have uh, uh, contributed to the overview to make sure that it um, followed more of the discussion. But at the same time, I would like in general, when very big visual design changes are implemented, that there's more discussion and more respect for the discussion that's behind them. Uh, in general, I would like something that, a bit like uh, you only merge a merge request if tests pass, you only merge a merge request if there's discussion and there's an agreement, and we update the human interface guidelines as an example, or any other web page that describes how the component should work before actually doing um, merging the merge request. That, that is my proposal after the goal. Um, am I forgetting anything? Ah, yes, uh, one la last thing. Uh, to actually address inconsistencies between applications that are a bit less, uh, I'll talk about that later. Anyway, second part, app redundancy. So another very big important part of the original consistency goal is all the application that seem redundant. That is, we have multiple applications doing the same thing. And this could lead, could lead to uh, workflow like I, we do f uh, the same work on different applications, so it gets kind of wasted. And from the outside, we don't quite look like a unified brand as we could be as KDE. Now, it really comes down to whether uh, one person thinks that KDE is an umbrella that should contain the projects that are very close to KDE development and everything, or whether KDE should be like more like a brand that actually tries to have the application for something. and. Uh, a couple of examples here. I still think that it is very much not a good idea to have two uh, different entire ecosystem within KDE. To make an example, Maui is very much doing their own thing with their own design. They have their own Maui kit. They also have their own the old shell, we, Maui shell, which is kind of an alternative to Plasma shell. And whereas Maui apps and Maui kit are part of KDE, Maui shell isn't, even though Maui shell is usually shipped with Maui application. This whole situation, I think, is really awkward. And what I would like to see is after that, we have something like an HIG that defines how apps should look and behave to actually go ahead and say, if an application that's within KDE doesn't look at all, it doesn't even try to follow the KDE guidelines, then it could be a third-party application very closely related to KDE, but not directly underneath the KDE umbrella. And uh, of course, this requires KDE to forcefully say bye-bye to some application, which is extremely naive. <laughs> I realize that. Um, but it is something that I would like to see more discussed in general, that is a, a, a proposal. Secondly, um, there are some apps that are a bit stagnant. Not Kurigami, obviously. There are some apps that are a bit stagnant. In general, I would like to see those apps uh, move to Kurigami because I think that Kurigami helps consistency incredibly. Um, some apps that, as an example, came my money is a very nice application. I actually see it developed with new icons and new. T I think that these kind of applications, uh, we should try to go to them and um, try to convince them to switch to a Kurigami, um, to a Kurigami, and that would actually help the consistency goal a lot. Again, extremely naive, but on the long term, I think that should be the way. Thirdly, there are a lot of applications that seem 
extremely similar, but they are actually different in how they work. As an example, we have Kate and Kay Wright. And uh, I actually want to congratulate a lot with how Kate handled this, because even though they're technically different applications, uh, under the hood, they, have, they share the same code. They're uh, almost the same application. This has been highlighted very nicely in a recent blog post from them. I think that that should be how um, it works. To make another example, now that Latidoc doesn't quite have a, have a maintainer, maintainer anymore, something that could be nice, instead of, like many asked outside of the KDE developers community, replace panel, uh, the Plasma panel with Latidoc, which is not feasible, but try to share as much code as possible to make sure that uh, Latte becomes more of an extension to the normal Plasma panels. That would actually um, help develop both projects and keep them alive. Thirdly, brand consistency. I talked uh, this about, uh, about this a lot in the original consistency blog post, talking about the website. As an example, many applications had their own website that looked completely different compared to each other website. And I think that there has been a lot of improvement for this. Like, just to make a very small example, recent one, the Bugzilla um, instance was redesigned to look very much more like the KDE design. And I think, like Carl in particular, has done a lot of job to make sure that all the websites inside the kd.org directory actually looked with the same design. I think that has improved a lot, so I'm really happy about this. One thing that I could um, suggest, uh, which I didn't even think about, obviously, firstly, is that we could try from the promo side of things to commission a uh, brand guidelines to use throughout all external communications. We already have, I think, some good ones, especially like Academy. Uh, the style of Academy and Academy announcement are very consistent throughout the years, but I think there is some room of improvement in general. Lastly, uh, consistency between applications and Plasma, or within Plasma itself. Uh, something, I, I think this is another place where there was a lot of improvements, uh, like making the start menu actually look consistent in its design with the other applications. We have now consistent highlights between Plasma and application. We have the header area, which looks the same and actually follows this, the color scheme. All of these things are great, and I think they are very nice improvements. The icons uh, with the margin areas, I think, improved uh, also, and uh, their size is generally more consistent now. So I think there has been a lot of improvements from this side of things. One thing that I would like to see improve, uh, and uh, as much as I can, I would like to help as well in this, is the plasma styling, because we have split completely the styling between apps and Plasma. So Plasma is completely styled through SVGs, whereas apps have their own queue styles, and which means that every time you make a design change, you have to implement it separately in uh, an SVG and in, um, uh, in the queue style. And I, I got to say that I, I currently actually like the SVG theming system. It is simple, you can easily use it, but the more I actually look into it and um, develop stuff for it, uh, the more I feel like, w wha what? Uh, <laughs> uh, so this is something that I would like to see. As, uh, I know that there are discussions on improving the theming system for Plasma 6 and uh, moving to something like CSS as an example. There has been that kind of discussions. It's something that, um, from the consistency point of view, would help a lot. So I would hope to see them. Uh, lastly, I want to say that in the Plasma um, UI and some of the applications, there are some paper cuts to do, like very small spacing uh, mistakes. Sometimes there are slightly less spacing that there should be, and they're inconsistently used throughout the UI. Those are very small, very easy to fix, and I think those could be a good way to actually onboard people and get them to contribute. Whenever we post a screenshot on Reddit, there's always that Reddit guy that goes, Spaces, spacing is wrong, and I think that could be an onboarding opportunity. Finally, how was the goal? Um, I, uh, <laughs> uh, do you want to contribute to my slides? Uh, 
they were correct when I sent them, so. <laughs> now, um, anyway, how is the goal? Uh, I did a chat for the consistency goal. I think that that chat has lived a couple of days and then it died. That is not something that I would do again. I think it's really important to value the existing communities, such as the um, BDG. And that is where I would have, um, uh, that is the chat that I would have used uh, doing the goal again uh, nowadays. Secondly, the sprints that we had were completely useless, sadly. You know, COVID didn't help. <laughs> so, uh, and the fact that the goal was um, prolonged one year uh, didn't help us make an in person sprint. So, uh, I would have wanted to see an in person uh, consistency sprint. We, we couldn't. So that was sad. The blog post, I have done, I think, four or five blog posts about consistency, uh, which were supposed to be monthly, uh, you know, falling uh, near the meetings with uh, Adam. That didn't, I, I stopped doing them, and that was a mistake. I think that blog posts, either weekly or monthly, are of great use, and they actually engage the community a lot. And I would suggest, uh, in general, that gold champions do blog uh, posts about them because it actually helps convince other to, um, it helps with engagement and so other developers can actually value that goal more and contribute to it. Uh, so blog post, yes, especially we can see the needs one as a example uh, on how it went great. Um, last point I want to touch is that uh, I feel like the last year in particular has been super slow for the consistency goal. And if I were to choose now, uh, originally, originally I actually asked for an extension from two to three years because of uh, the pandemic. Nowadays, I wouldn't have asked for it because it hasn't been of um, much use. So I'm a bit sad about that. It is totally because of me because I didn't actually do much on the consistency point of view. I uh, got lost in the contributing to Plasma in other ways, like the floating panels, these kind of things. I didn't help much. So that is totally uh, something I, I blame myself for. I, I don't want to make this presentation like uh, I'm blaming others. No, done, not now. And that was actually the last point I wanted to touch. So thanks everybody, subscribe to my YouTube channel, leave a like and everything. Are there any questions for the champion? to argue for certain projects to be included or not included purely on a brand basis, especially when in the case of things like Maui, we share a lot of code with them. So there are clear synergies, to use a businessy word, um, between general KDE projects and Maui projects. Yes, uh, the GCompris example is actually one I went through when doing the slides, I thought about it. Uh, it is true that it doesn't follow the KDE's design, but JCompress is actually meant for something else entirely. It has a UI that is meant for, um, I guess, uh, children to learn, and so big buttons, big flashy buttons, that's the use case, and it is 
extremely reasonable for that uh, user interface to be completely different. When I started three years ago the consistency goal, I actually talked uh, a lot with the Maui people on how to best address the, um, uh, the fact that their design was completely different. And I feel like uh, there hasn't been much uh, effort from their side to make sure that um, they fit the community very nicely in terms of consistency. That is my impression. And I am not saying that we should like, okay, no, I am saying that we should kick it. <laughs> Let's not try to sugarcoat it. But I, I do think that it would be better to have uh, Maui as a very close uh, organization to KDE so that uh, very close to KDE, but not directly under the KDE organization. We have many other organizations that are not are very close to KDE, but not directly underneath. So that would be what I'm proposing. I think that this current situation is uh, not optimal. That is, I, I know, a very controversial personal opinion that I wanted to share. OK. Uh, so you talked about a subject near and dear to my heart, which is VDG engagement. Um, my question is, how do you think we can make developers want to listen to VDG more? Because I, I think policies that aren't supported by pre-existing community desires uh, don't work so well. So how, how do you think we can make VDG a more attractive thing for people to listen to? Yes, I don't think that most of the things that weren't implemented were, weren't because uh, the VDG wasn't appealing. Um, I think that there was, n there's maybe not enough work uh, force to make sure that all applications and all maintainers start working towards uh, consistency with what uh, the VDG proposes. What I see personally as a way uh, to improve things is making sure that as many applications are as possible currently either switch or are made in Kurigami because in Kurigami or uh, other toolkits that built on Kurigami uh, that could be created. Uh, as an example, Janet wanted to make one. Because this way, the components that can define their own style directly inside of the toolkit. So whenever an application uses that toolkit, it uh, is um, consistent out of the box without even the need to uh, go to each maintainer and ask them to change their design. Uh, if I look throughout Kurigami application, I think that their consistency is significantly higher compared if I look throughout uh, KD, Kurigami and Qt widgets applications in general. And so that is a way that I would see things improving. Thank you very much, Nicolo. Applause, please. So the third goal is the Wayland goal. Unfortunately, Maven couldn't be with us today, but he is in spirit. <laughs> and I think if we really think about him, we just might hear his voice. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Uh, So, as Adam said, I'm Miren. I'm here to present you the final well on goal update. Uh, I couldn't make it to Barcelona, but so welcome it is for me and my spirit will be here. So, first a bit of introduction about the, the goal. The goal is just simply to deliver a pixel perfect free, lightweight and secure exp user experience on, uh, on the Linux desktop and not just the desktop. So, as you, anyone can hear, it's just Easy, right? <laughs> what else can we ask for? But we are a first community with resources, so we need to to find uh, more people to contribute to, and, and so to attract users and contributors. And, and that's what the main goal of the well on goal was. In fact, uh, the, in a few years, we couldn't really achieve all we, we were tasked to do. But only if we were to find enough people to uh, to push things forward, to create this virtual cycle of uh, users, users reporting bugs and bugs getting fixed, 
and, and, and more could developers joining in and so on. So we make uh, incremental steps, small steps sometimes, one bad fix at a time, one release at a time, and, and plasma release, releases mark the milestone, uh, mark the milestone of the progress in our software stack. Uh, so I'm gonna present a brief recap of uh, plasma uh, releases and the well-known progress since last academy. And in plasma 5.24, we got the overview effect. Oh, my slider. All right, Plasma 5.24, we got the overview effect, uh, which, which improved the user experience despite the inconsistencies, perhaps, uh, but really greatly um, improved the backend of Queen, allowed Queen to be uh, less stringent on uh, OpenGL, which opened the door to better effects in the future, in particular, by simpler compatibility with Wayland. Uh, we got uh, improved NVIDIA support uh, because NVIDIA, uh, the uh, famous GPU maker, uh, finally released a driver that could help support Wayland on their GPUs. Uh, because of that, we implemented the support. Queen developers added the uh, support in, uh, in, in Queen for these GPUs. And, uh, and this is, but uh, a patch in Qt was needed too. So the, the patch was done in Qt 6 and back party to Qt patch collect, uh, Kadi Qt patch collection, uh, which unfortunately doesn't reach all our users. And, and so that's why I, I put this uh, asterisk. It's really a, a hard caveat, given that uh, the distros that doesn't, the users that don't get uh, those patches are uh, using a very popular distro, uh, unfortunately. Uh, and it has been a sore point for, for well on the user experience in general. And in Plasma 5.24, improve, improve stability. So really we got an influx of, of positive feedback on, on diverse uh, means of communication online after the release. In next. Adam, can you move on to my next slide, please? All right. And in, Plasma 5.25, we got the touch mode, with, which allowed uh, better uh, tablet support, and which was awesome, which was really uh, aligned with Welland. And we got a ton of uh, stability improvements, uh, building upon the, the previous work. Next slide, please. And we are getting uh, ready to release the uh, next version, and, and next version is like the others. It just add a few more, uh, it fixes a few more issues, a few at a time. So we we gonna get a improved virtual keyboard support. Virtual keyboard support got implemented a while back, but now it's a, it's a good opportunity to, to improve upon it. And, and Alej did some nice work on it. Uh, we have better graphical tablet support. Also, it was implemented in Plasma 5.23, if I recall correctly. Uh, support, but now you can properly set it up in uh, in a KCM so that your graphical tablet uh, rightly corresponds to your screens, to your screen coordinates. And we got XWL and GPI improvements, so now users will be able to set the uh, behavior of uh, fractional scaling with their XWL applications uh, between two between two choices. And we got a lot of stability improvements and got really impressed with how many bugs we, we got to fix and, and from small to, from some to big. And next slide. Yeah. And, but all is not uh, great. We still have a lot to do and we have a long, uh, a list of show stoppers that has been shrinking, but slowly. 
and we have still have some big items that we will eventually fix, uh, like missing color profiles. When, when I said at the introduction that we need pixel perfection, well, that's kind of the subjects that we need to tackle to achieve this, this goal, because uh, at least for some users and ne need these kind of features. And, and until we fix those, we fulfill those features, those users won't be able to use Wayland uh, sessions. And we have a blurry rendering with fractional scaling and, and that you can observe whenever you use fractional scaling on, on Wayland, you will have blurry things because of double uh, double sc scaling up and scaling down the image. And, and those two issues are as symptomatic of, uh, of some of uh, Wayland uh, ongoing progress because those two are being worked on in the Wayland community where uh, KDE members also are contributing and being part of the of the effort. Um, but but all, all in all, it, it takes a quite a long time in during this progress process, but it, it will ev eventually uh, come around. And there are many more, uh, quite a good handful more, like some that will need uh, Qt6 and Plasma 6 to be solved. And that's that's something that makes me think that uh, uh, Plasma 6 will be an important milestone for well on the support. And then we will have to achieve our goal. We will need next step. We will need a better application compatibility because once we have a good session, we need there are a lot of applications that have different needs. For instance, uh, uh, for virtualizations applications, uh, usually they are only targeting X11. So through X way long, their support is not great. It would be so much greater if they could be well and native uh, on the outside. And for screen recording, we have uh, OBS that supports uh, PyPrior screen recording, but other applications uh, need uh, to adapt. And, and those issues are really the chicken and egg problem. But the, the good news is that the, the, we have more chicken now. Well, the, the the wheel is spinning, and, and now, as we progress, as uh, as other platform also uh, push well on use usage, like uh, it is Ubuntu GNOME uh, really is, uh, is gonna use well on wherever possible, if I recall, and and, and devices that uses well on by default will really push uh, adoption forward, and will we will reap the benefits eventually. And uh, and uh, the goal is going to, is coming to an end, but uh, community efforts won't. Uh, by that I mean that uh, we have a strong momentum, and and now we have uh, uh, a good chunk of our users uh, that uh, that are using Wellon and and expecting it to be to become the norm. Uh, so I, I started a poll on uh, on Reddit in our subreddit or on Kali subreddit to ask our users on how many were using Wayland or, or whether they were not just interested or finding it n not suiting their needs. And we can on on this particular web page we could see that uh, 40, about forty percent of those users that answered. Um, uh, already uses already use Wayland. Forty percent are really expecting it to to improve before they can make the switch, and and about twenty percent don't, don't will wait the last moment because either they they don't care about this kind of uh, problem or they want uh, uh, stability of uh, above all, and and that's really encouraging because. Uh, on this forum, this is quite unrepresentative to all our users, but still it allows us to see that we, we well on usage begins to, re to, 
to reach maturation uh, stage uh, with regard to the adoption phase. Uh, when we have a new technology, usually we have a, a curve of users that adopt them progressively. And we have the early adopters and, and then the step in different phases. And, and we, according to Reddit, we can see that it's more, uh, we are reaching the maturation phase. Uh, but we we need still to to uh, to to put that in perspective that that is not fully representative to our users. So so it's uh, a bit too optimistic to the reality. And but now at least we can see that we created ourselves a critical mass of users that going to report bugs and help us uh, fix them eventually with this uh, thanks to a virtual cycle uh, and uh, and there's no stopping the the well on momentum all right i'm done Thank you very much, Maven. Are there any questions for the champion? I'll check the online widget. No online questions. Anyone here in person? No? Thank you again, Maven. Can we switch to my slides, please? Okay, so those were the updates for our champions, the current champions for a few minutes more. Uh, like I said previously, the goals live on, the work on consistency, Wayland team, and the focus on apps, I hope will continue after this presentation. But now let's talk about the present. So you are here, hopefully, either online or in person at the moment you've been waiting for. <laughs> Six proposals didn't leave, they're not ready for voting. Six advanced to the final vote. <laughs> Over 400 votes later, and yes, I had to use Kevin's script again. <laughs> and I actually added it to the process of the wiki page, so it's it's part of the process now. <laughs> Thanks, Kevin. It's time to announce the new KDE goals. And as the um, tradition goes, I will ask the new champions to join me on stage. And without any preparation, they will have to <laughs> talk about <laughs> how they plan to lead the goal for the next couple of years. So without further ado, the new KDA goals are, and you should know them, you have them on your lanyard. <laughs> KDA for all, boosting accessibility, automated and systematized internal processes and sustainable software. Carl, do you want to join us on the stage? Yeah. Hello, everyone. Uh, I guess you, most of, our, most of you already uh, know me. I'm Carl. I'm doing a lot of stuff with uh, websites and also uh, calendar and also nail chat a few KM applications. Uh, yeah, I wanted to have this goal about activity because uh, we are developing software, but unfortunately, uh, our software is not ready yet to be used by everyone. Uh, and most, okay, yes, 
We have the platform issues, what we are not on every platform. This was the goal from last year. We bought the caddy for all the apps. This was the apps uh, goal. And uh, as well, like, because some um, issue with the screen with us, but not everyone can actually use applications because they don't have the capabilities always to be able to see the application or to use the, the mouse to navigate the applications. And uh, that's why I um, wanted to have a uh, goal about aggressivity, aggressivity <coughs> so we can reach more people and uh, also help them because like the goal of KD is like to provide application for the end users and so that they are also able to use our applications. Um, yeah, I think that's <laughs> mostly it. <laughs> Are there any questions for the new <laughs> champion? Okay, you're being kind to, to Carl. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Um, Nate, would you join us on the stage? Hello, everybody. So my idea with this automation and systematization goal was born out of the observation that in a volunteer community such as ours, uh, people come and go a lot. And it's amazing that we've managed to produce what we have largely through volunteer efforts. Um, and I think it shows the passion that is embodied in this community. But it also means that because people are coming and going a lot, Oftentimes when people go, they take their knowledge with them. And so my idea here is that while people are involved in KDE, we make sure that that knowledge gets out of people's heads and put into systems and processes so that the larger community as a whole can continue to benefit from people's knowledge even when they may not necessarily be actively contributing at any given moment in time. So this comprises things like ensuring that we have automatic processes to do certain things with bug triaging, for example. It means that we improve our continuous integration to check for people, to, to check for things that currently people are automatically checking for. It means that we document our knowledge and we put that documentation online. Uh, it means that when we leave KDE, either temporarily or permanently, we, we do offboarding too, to make sure that our knowledge stays within the community. Um, and then when we return later, we can regain that knowledge and build on what was there. So uh, my hope here is that all of us can sort of externalize our brains a little bit and so that, that we continue to benefit the KDE community even in moments when we're not personally uh, contributing at any given moment in time. So thank you very much everybody for choosing this goal and uh, I hope we can make some really great progress with it over the next couple of years. Any questions for the new champion? Yep, I don't see any. Thank you very, mu very much, Nate. Yeah, so this um, uh, concludes the presentation because unfortunately we don't have uh, Cornelius with us uh, uh, today for the uh, sustainable software. But fear not, I will be contacting our new champions, figuring out our monthly meetings, and I'll be sure to make, uh, make them do updates and outreach to the community so you'll be, uh, you'll be hearing from Cornelius and the rest of the new champions uh, very soon. Um, are there any questions about the, the process to, to me as, as a speaker um, from, the, from the audience before we end it? I don't see any, any online. Okay, here's one in person.
Um, that this goals process, there were like 200 less votes than the two votes before. Do you think before I think the goals process was a success story? At least I see so, but for some reason that a significant amount of people less, people less voted this time. Do you have an idea why that is, or is it just? Yeah, I, I noticed that we had uh, significantly less votes than uh, compared to the previous years. Unfortunately, I couldn't find a, the reason why. As far as I know, we did it completely the same as, as the years prior, which is to announce on the, um, on the community mailing list and also send direct invites to everyone with a, with a developer account, uh, because you, you need that to, to actually vote. Uh, and there were also follow-up emails to nudge people to actually uh, vote for those who, who didn't. Um, so I'm not exactly sure what happened. I doubt we had that much less developers or, we, or developer accounts active than, than previously. Uh, but it's definitely something I would love to uh, think about and improve in the future so we have even more people voting. Maybe there's an opportunity to talk about the general process of voting and how to improve it. Maybe the restrictions are too big right now and, uh, and we should open that to more people. But I uh, encourage anyone who, who has ideas who would like to talk about the process to um, either do it with me here on the conference or maybe on the, uh, on the community mailing list and I'm all ears. Thanks for the question. One thing to add to that? I might have been spamming people a bit more <laughs> in past years where people uh, actually complained. Okay, so, so Lydia, was, <laughs> Lydia was spamming people more than I did. Maybe, maybe, that's, that. maybe that's the reason, yeah. I have one question and one comment first uh, related to the last question and comment from Lydia. Did the voting happen, happen during the same period of the year? Was it also in August? Because uh, August is a season when people go on holidays. Maybe there's an effect there. Yeah, that's a good question. The voting is set up to happen um, ex uh, like, like that time frame is pinned to when Academy is. So because Academy happens at different months, then the outreach, the voting, the selection process, etc., it's all pinned to w when that date is. So uh, I don't... I would have to check when, at what month was academies uh, for when the previous goals were announced and the ones prior to that, but there, yeah, there is a chance that the months were maybe less, uh, less good for outreaching people for, for voting. That's, that's a good a observation, thank you. Yeah. Um, and also, I'm not the champion for sustainable software, but I'm involved in the Blauer Angle for FOSS, and we will have a panel discussion. So if there are questions related to that, um, some of it may be overlap with uh, what Cornelius uh, has proposed in the goal. Just wanted to announce that. Great. So if people are curious about the, the sustainable uh, goal, then you, they can go to, the, uh, to that. Thank you very much. Were we using uh, GitLab, uh, GitLab um, when we were doing those previous votes? So we, we, if we were using GitLab for what? Git, GitLab, because we used to use Fabricator. Um, and then I noticed it was um, a lot harder to keep up with um, pretty much everything after we moved to GitLab because of all the email spam that was uncategorized. So I wonder if like more people lost their emails within all the, the, the flow of GitLab emails or something. That's, um, yeah, that's something I, I oh, Lydia has an answer? Oh. Yeah, so the, the um, drafting of the goals uh, just like in previous years, happened on Fabricator, so we haven't moved that to GitLab. Okay, thanks, Lydia. Anyone else? Any other questions? Okay, then thank you very much.